good morning and welcome to this edition of our youtube channel lecture pain free partha today's talk is about theories of pain okay as soon as you see this youtube channel theories of pain everybody swipe out next video please i will try to comprehensively tell with some practical aspects about the theories of pain now introduction pain perception now you feel the pain it's a subjective experience it depends upon the subject there is no objective evidence much influenced by complex interaction of biological psychosocial factors someone's pain is not equal to other that is what i told subjective experience now we will go to the topic what are the theories of pain so why i want this because subjective experience biological psychological social factors someone's pain is not equal to the other then we will go to the theories of pain how does how did it start like there are so many theories intensity theory cartesian dualistic theory specificity theory but not much difficult we will go one by one in simple terms progress is not an accident but it is a necessity so unless you progress on the theories of nature or sorry theories of pain we, we it's a necessity now the hippocrates and galen believed that all parts of illness came from four fluids of the body that is what is true he said pain, they said pain is blood blood well capacity heart is the chamber that is what he told heart is the sensing organ and pain is by the increased to blood viscosity that is what it started humor theory of hippocrates and galen now we go to intensity theory what is it now you you touch it here it it feels as touch if you touch it here it feels as pain that is what is called the intensity theory if you give the same stimulus with more intensity the perception is different it may be painful that is what he told us intensity theory now there are a lot of deficiencies why should the application of diclofenac gel relieve pain how a part not involved in the disease or stimulation as pain so the part is not involved in the disease not like him it is not involved but still the stimulation as pain the cartesian dualistic theory pain was a mutually exclusive phenomenon it could be result of physical injury or a psychological injury what he said was it is not combination it cannot cause a creative synergic effect no point that is what he told that there is physical there is psychological but he said dual he did it will not act synergistically dualistic that is what he told us artesian dualistic can we accept now now we say that uh, completely psychological pain has got enough psychic influence now he also told it is related to soul and related to pineal gland what does it secrete now melatonin now he say melatonin is linked to pain that is what they linked the cartesian dualistic theory to pineal gland to melatonin now probably putting some point for cartesian dualistic theory that is what this person has established charles bell in his specificity theory specificity theory now we know intensity theory we know cartesian dualistic theory first we know humor theory it delineates different types of sensation to different parts slowly emerged the subtars and pathi he told there are some specific things which goes and tells that it is pain there are some specific things which tells that it is touch so he was near for our receptors he was near for our pathways specific sensations 
specific pathways they travel. That is what is called specificity theory. Why should there be an injury after the pain that should the injury heal? Why should there be allodynia? Here we should be very careful. Dynia means pain. Allo means it is not a painful stimulus. It's a touch stimulus causing pain. Allodynia. Hyperalgesia means painful stimulus causing more pain. Allodynia means touch causing pain. Okay. Now, what is told intensity theory and there are specificity theory. What is pattern theory? We again came back from specificity. No, no, no. There is no specific things. No specific receptors. It is a pattern of stimulation. Some pattern of stimulation, it goes like this. Same receptor, same pathway. But it depends upon the pattern of stimulation. The pain is sensed. The touch is sensed. That is what this NAFE in 1888 told. Receptors and pathways are now identified. So the rele relevance of this NAFE's pattern theory is questioned. Central summation theory. See, this is slowly coming up. Livingston in 1943 told central summation theory. What it told was intense stimulation. Now we have a stimulation. Tissue is damaged. That protects with an internential neuron here within the spinal cord, creating reverberating circuits. These reverberating circuits will activate some more neurons. These bombard cells in the spinal cord is projected to the brain as pain perception. This is what it told. Now we have given an internal stimulus. This goes to the spinal cord. It creates a reverberating circuit and this is summated in the brain as pain. Protopathic and epicritic theory. What is this epicritic theory? Again, I am telling you, this has slightly come up. Epicritic is discrimination, exteroceptive. Protopathic is interoceptive, not localized. For example, now, it's a dull, boring, localized pain is protopathic. Sharp, subjective pain is localized, is epicritic. Epicritic, protopathic. That is what now we told. First pain, A delta fibers and second pain by the unmyelinated C fibers. This is what he was thinking in terms of distinct fiber pathways. That is what he was thinking in terms of protopathic and epicritic pathways. Now we have a sensory interaction theory. He describes two systems, fast and slow systems. See here, the latter slow conducts somatic and visceral afferents, transmission of small fibers. He said it is multi-synaptic afferent system. Here it goes. Afferent system is not single nerve fiber. He told it synapses somewhere. It goes synapses somewhere. That is now coming now. Now it is specificity theory, intensity theory, summation theory, reverberatory circuit theory, sensory interaction theory. So many theories are now dualistic theories. What is fourth theory of pain? What he told was, pain has got two components, one perceptional, and then the second is the reaction towards us. Now, reaction was a complex physio-psychological process involving cognition, past experience, culture. See here, he told what was the past experience of the same type of pain. Now we are calling pain memories. Now we are progressing towards theories of what is known as pain memory. Now he has told past experience is a complex physio-psychological process. Yes, see here, this is the reaction to pain. So, so many theories, the CNS response was not accounted, visceral pain, persistent chronic pain issues were not addressed, referral pain completely not addressed, chronic pains not addressed, something like that. Now we go to gate control theory of pain. This is an interesting thing, important thing, exam question, everything. So Melzack and Wall, yes, written a textbook of pain. I have got that book of a pain signal that are generated at a particular site of injury. For example, here, they do not directly go to the brain. Instead, they pass through a gate in the spinal cord. That 
the pain signals encounter. It enters in between there is a gate. That is what Melzack wall propulsion. We will come back again because it is important. Now this is substantia gelatinosa is the gate. Now this is a small diameter fiber from which the pain fibers are coming and going from the transmission to cross pain. But in between, this inhibit this substantia gelatinosa. This will inhibit this. This double negative will become positive, so the gate opens more pain. But if you stimulate a large diameter fiber, it stimulates the SG. Can you see? It stimulates the SG, closes the gate. There is no pain from here. That is why pain is decreased by stimulation of large diameter fibers. Here it acts as the gate, closes the pain transmission through the gate. Now, gate control touches the cognitive part of the brain. How you see? This depression opens the gate. Unhealthy life cell opens the gate. Negative state of mind opens the gate. So, cortical control is there. If there is an unhealthy lifestyle, it opens the gate. That is what is the main thing. So many things have come in this gate control theory involving the cortex. That is one cognitive part of pain. Now, we have headache. Small diameter fiber is. Now, you put this some bomb. It stimulates the large diameter and causes substantia fibrosis, gelatinosa, and closes the gate. That is why we get relief from headache or backache by rubbing with some ointment. Now, when we get itching here, itching also traverses through small diameter fibers. We scratch. This scratch is going through large diameter fiber. Again, you see, similar to you are big or whatever it is. Now scratch causes decreased itching. It is not at all causing anything related to histamine or small diameter fiber. We scratch, we use the gate control theory, stop the itch. But still it is not able to say phantom limb pain, which we will discuss later. Phantom limb pain is another video. Now there is an interaction between A beta and L delta. A beta is touch, A delta is pain. So acute pain, touch sensation is more. Chronic pain, touch sensation is less. It's an important clinical aspect. Now we have got all the theories, weight control theory, intensity theory, pattern theory, specificity theory and all. Now there is something called descending pain modulation, which I will give a separate video because as soon as it passes, it also stimulates something and goes again, comes back to depress the pain. This is what is the action is through periaqueductal gray, locus ceruleus, nucleus raphe magnus, and the catecholamines, 5-HT, and opioids. These are the three chemical substances acting through periaqueductal gray, nucleus raphe magnus, locus ceruleus. This is the descending control of pain, which we will discuss in separate topic in a separate video. Now, we, again, this Ronald Melzack was not very convincing about his own theory of gate control theory. He came up with neuro matrix model. What is this neuro matrix model? It's an example, exam question. The neuro matrix model is responsible cns is responsible that is what it tells the brain is responsible for any pain it is not the stimulus whatever the stimulus you give then only i thought how certain saints are able to tolerate pain very easily so this is what the cns is responsible for eliciting pain sensations rather than the pain the components are one two three and four. Now we have to have activation of neuro matrix. Now it consists of multiple areas. Now we have a brain, thalamus, limbic system, prefrontal area, spinal cord. From the spinal cord, it goes to the limbic thalamus, limbic system, brain, prefrontal areas, etc. 
multiple connections. So it sets up a neuro matrix. What they say is it produces a pain signature. That is what is called a neuro signature. This signature inside created by the brain, by the stimulus, is one that causes the pain. That is what is the neuro matrix theory of Ronald and Melzack. Only peripheral signals alone cannot elicit pain signature. This is the main thing which he said. Thermal stimulation has increased blood flow by MRI has been completely established. So now we have a neuromatrix. It allows for memory formation of particular experiences. This is what is the main thing, pain memory. We already we have told there was a link. It is this memory that allows the same sensation. It gets influenced by cognitive, emotional, and physical factors. Now you see cognition related brain areas. Memories, attention, anxiety, etc. comes. Sensory. Now we have pick. It was that is sensory. Emotion is the limbic system. All the three ports to produce pain sensation, to produce action, to produce stress related, pain related hormones. Endorphins also stimulated. Norephrine also stimulated. Steroids are also stimulated. This is what is the inputs and outputs of the neuromatrix. Cognitive, sensory, emotion. Pain, action and stress. But it explains why some pharmacology, non-pharmacological methods help. It throws light on labor pain relief methods. But it doesn't count into the thing individuals experience social constructs of pain all these things are not much dealt in the neuro matrix theory what are the problems individual variation number two social constructs this is not well dealt in a neuro matrix model now what is homeostatic theory rather than seeing pain as an extrusive sense of touch pain is a homeostatic thing neuroanatomical Neurophysiological, motivation at the scene. This is what he told. It's a, it's a homeostasis. That is what he told. Now we will go back to the less advancement. Biopsychosocial model. It comes in everything. Now you see mental health, social family circumstances, schooling, peers, experts, drug effects, temperament, biological, psychological, and social. All these things, biopsychosocial model of mental health. Now you see the biopsychological social factors of pain, genetics, physiology, neurochemistry, tissue damage, here biological factors, socioeconomic status, very important, social skepticism, operant, social learning, social support. Perceived control self catastrophic thinking, hypervigilance, depression, anxiety, anger. So, bio psycho social model of pain experiences. John Bonica, the father of pain, found it difficult to treat pain of injuries and war trauma. He said it is an interaction of these things. There must be something to address factors, especially in chronic pain syndrome. Bonica's textbook of pain is there. Big book. John Bonica. Now we will see patient with HIV. He has got neuropathy and pain. So neuropathy is severe because of the HIV. That is bio. Now you say he has got a lot of depression, mental agony because of this HIV. He has got psycho. Now he has got a social outcast, social influences. What are the problems if he tells pain? And in this case, so this pain has got now a biopsychosocial influence. Yes, it's a neuropathy caused by a child, but it has got biopsycho and social influence. Now we have a cancer cervix with infiltration. Tissue damage is there, pain is there. Now this patient has been told that there is a cancer cervix. So severe depression, 
psychological factors come up. Now we have something. Does the pain be influenced by his residence in an apartment in Mumbai or a small holes in a small village? Now this is an important factor because many people, ordinary people, lower socio-economic pains. They, they themselves think that some pain is acceptable. But this is not there with an highly influential patient. So this is what is bio, psycho, social factors of pain. Mumbai or Vadagapati village. This model has been proved to have superior outcomes in terms of increased patient satisfaction, restoration of functionality. So because now he has got pain, he has got social constraints, he has got psychological problems. Now you target all these things. His functionality will be better. He will go to office. He will start working. He will do his pipeline work. Unless you treat it as biopsychosocial approach, restoration of functionality is unlikely to come. And it is cost effective measured. And its uniqueness is clearly explained. Why do we need such models? You need to have assessment. Because we don't know the intensity of pain in terms of actual biological pain where vast this. Sometimes you go to PRI, pain rating indexes. There are so many things, so many models. So there it, it targets psychological social factors. So we need to have an interprofessional approach. Management depends upon cure, treat, it is a disease or illness. What is more important? Maximizing functionality. Now you see, we have got a post herpetic neuralgia here. Gait control theory what is this? You apply capsaicin. Capsaicin is an irritant, so gait control theory pain is decreased. Now, what next happens? A repeated application, it deprives completely the substance. Defunctionized those substance. So it becomes a different issue. This is how you should clinically target pain. What is the theory involved? So what is PHR? What is the role? What is infiltrative pain because of the malignancy? What is cancer pancreas doing? Cancer pancreas is infiltrating and causing pain. Cancer pancreas is causing severe malnutrition and pain. Cancer pancreas, psychological social factors. So many things. He vomits. And much more pain. So it should be a complete multidisciplinary approach. That is what is this means. In summary, there are a lot of theories, neuromatrix, biophysical, social models. So many theories, so many applications, explanations means what? It is still not well understood. Thank you very much. And visit my website painfreepartha.com for slides. And listen to my YouTube channel, Pain Free Part.